Uh, our current studies are, could be some of the most difficult in the Bible. It's the last book of the Bible, and we don't very often give the total name of the book. It says it is the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and uh, if, you keep, if you keep that in mind, you keep your direction right. If you say this is the, the revelation or the revealing or the pulling back of the curtain so that we can see more clearly, the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you will see in what ways he is re revealed as a judge to judge the earth, but as a pastor over the people. And you see him in many of his aspects of, of, of what he truly is. It's very exciting, really. And uh, I just trust that everyone has a teaching syllabus on it uh, and, and that you will use the outlines that are in there to develop and, and to increase your knowledge. We have now come to a very remarkable lesson that I, uh, it's called Lesson 15 and it's on page uh, 60. 83. Uh, it has to do with Satan, or the devil, becoming bound uh, out of circulation and then loosed for a short season. Uh, it's one of the great truths of the Bible, and I'd like for you to get, really get a hold of it. Uh, a, a Satan, who is the devil, at one time was a high archangel of the angelic groups in heaven of the creatures that were, that were specially created. They, they're not born creatures, they're created creatures. And in the book of Ezekiel, and you ought to underline those two passages here, and maybe keep them close to you, or maybe write them down in the front of your Bible so that you can find them in a hurry. Because people may ask you, where did the devil come from? And if you don't know, then they laugh at you, you see. But if you have Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 11 through 17, and then Isaiah chapter 14, uh, you, will, you will have the, the facts and, and, and uh, so much uh, information on it until anybody will be able to understand exactly what you mean. Uh, the Bible tells us he rebelled against his own creator, the one who made the heavens, the one who made the earth, uh, he rebelled. And, and then I, this study relates to how Satan in the future will become bound, uh, that uh, really bound, but with a, with a chain and with a key. Uh, he, he, he won't be moving about, he won't be tempting anybody, he won't be putting nasty, dirty, things into people's ears anymore and producing it before their eyes anymore. Uh, he will be bound and that will be during the entire reign of Christ, which is for 1,000 years. And that's what's going to make it great. <laughs> uh, there, won't be any, there won't be any bad influences around. In the society that you and I live in, every time you move your head, you're observing a bad influence because the devil sees to it that the bad influence is there. And so uh, for 1,000 years, Christ will reign upon the earth. And during that time, uh, he will be completely uh, out of circulation. Then he'll have a short time uh, of being free uh, before his final doom that we have here in the Word of God. Now, let me answer a question, and it may be a little further than the question, and, and the lesson, so we may answer it twice. Why would Satan be loosed again after he was bound and in prison? Because during the thousand years, millions of people are born. Millions of people are born. They will be born of natural people. At that time, the saints of God will already have put on their eternalness, they will be like Jesus. And so we're not discussing them at all, and I don't know that they would even have any children at all. But during the millennial reign, the natural nations that are upon the face of the earth will have millions of children. They will have never have been tempted in their life. You know, you, you can say, I wouldn't steal a million dollars. 
There's just one problem there. Have you had an opportunity? Are you here or not? You don't know what you'll do until you've had an opportunity. In other words, you're going to have to have a test to what you said with your mouth, you know. I wouldn't commit adultery with anybody. Have you ever had any opportunity yet? Are you here? And so all of these people that are born have to decide whether they want to serve God or not. And so the devil has to be loosed, uh, not for the saints of God at all, but, but for those that are born during that 1,000 year reign, so they can see, do you want to go to heaven? You've seen Jesus, you've seen the saints of God. Uh, do you want to go to heaven? Or do you want to serve sin? And so after that, we have the battle of Gog and Magog, and that ties the whole thing up then for eternity. Under your reading, it says uh, in <clears throat> Revelation 20 and 1, I saw an angel. I put a circle around the word angel because I want to show you something here. Uh, I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit. I'm sure there are a lot more things <laughs> in operation that we didn't know anything about. Uh, who, who, who knew they had a key up there just for one, one place down there? And they kept it in heaven. Isn't that, isn't that something? An angel came. God did not come. Jesus did not come. An angel came, and, and he had a key to the bottomless pit, and he also had a chain in his hand. Oh, I didn't know they had chains in heaven. Well, we found out here we got keys and chains both uh, in heaven. They may have a lot of stuff there that you're not aware of yet. And he laid, his, and he laid hold on the dragon. An angel did. Now, 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 you and I are above angels. You and I will judge angels. We command angels. Now, it says that the, he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil. Now, you got to identify him pretty well, didn't you, right there. And he is Satan and bound him a thousand years. Now, that shows you that an angel has more superpower than the devil has. An angel does. Now, you and I are greater than angels. He that is in us is greater than he that's in the world. And, and you're showing here the, the potential and the possibilities that, are, that dwell within us that maybe the devil through fear has caused us not to enjoy and not to use as, as, we, as we should use it. And this angel took Satan, which is the devil, which is the old serpent. Uh, China has the dragon as, as its god over there. That old serpent called the dragon. And he, and he will cast him, verse 3, into the bottomless pit and shut him up. <laughs> I like that, shut him up. That means his mouth and his feet both. And she'll shut him up and set a seal upon him. It does something. He'll be sealed closed. Just like you turn a key on a boat and a door. Uh, set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more until the thousand years should be fulfilled. Now, I told you what I just told you so that you'll have no fear of that area. Uh, there, there's no fear in your heart. You're already redeemed. You've already put on your immortal bodies. And we have already ruled with Christ for a thousand years. So the temptation does not belong to us at all. It belongs to those that were born during that 1,000 years. And he says, and after that, he must be loosed for a short season or little season. Now, in your point number one, uh, from the Garden of Eden to the book of the Revelation, Satan uh, uh, deals uh, with a big, as a being, complete being, and that he is real, and, and that he wants to be the God of this age. Uh, the same spirits in mankind today, you know. I feel sorry for men that are tremendously aggressive to own companies, to control Wall Street, uh, finances, to control banks, to, 
If, if you knew, maybe you already know people in this city that just seek to control this city, that they, they and even though it's a small place, uh, they, that spirit that energized Satan and caused him to lose heaven, uh, he has his same spirit in the world today that he, that he wants to be where he's got no business being. He wants to be over others and control others. And that spirit is in our world today. Uh, he is called the God of this age and the prince of the power of the air. Now his doom is literal. Not, not, we're not talking about uh, uh, ethereal things at this moment. We're talking about absolute absolutes. That uh, he's a literal person and he's going to literally be put out of circulation. Just like the men in jail <coughs> downtown today, they're out of circulation. And there's keys down there and there's doors down there and they're there, you see. And that will be the same with Satan. Uh, he shall be bound by a literal angel with a literal chain. <clears throat> I, like, I like to say that because so many people, all the Bible, know that's just a figure. This is not just a figure of speech. Uh, this is what's going to happen to the enemy of our souls. Uh, he's not a winner. He is a loser. Say loser. loser. He is not a winner. He's ultimate, and he knows it. He's just fighting as long as he possibly can because he knows he's going to lose in the end. Uh, he will be cast into a little abyss and sealed with a real seal. And, and, his, and, and his withdrawal uh, makes the way for a, a, a millennial. He's being taken out of the, out of, out of the way. Uh, the, the earth has a long awaited for this hour, and angels from heaven, uh, they had the key. And, and the angel will lay hold upon the dragon, which is the serpent, the devil, and cast him to a pit that is called bottomless. How many have ever come down out of a high building on an elevator and you can't tell which way you're going? You're in a bottomless situation, you know. You don't know whether you're going up or coming down. Uh, and so, uh, he will be in a place of movement, but getting nowhere, arriving no place, you see, and that he will be cast into this pit that, that he feels has no bottom to it, where he will, be, will not deceive the nations. He deceives nations, not just people, that he will deceive them no more. Now, in the Revelation chapter 20, verse 7, we go a little further with our reading. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed for, from his prison uh, for a short season. He should go out and to deceive nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog. He will gather them together in a battle. Uh, and, and the number of whom is as the sand um, of the sea. So after a thousand years of people living on the earth, hundreds of millions of people, uh, when, they, when they hear Satan, they're gonna, some of them are going to believe in him, some won't. And uh, they will, the number is like the sand by the seashore. There's so many you can't count them. And, and the, so they went up on the face of the earth and they compassed uh, the camp of the saints about, that's Jerusalem. They, 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 the center, the center, uh, I don't know where that could ever get it through to you, but you, you know, the devil tells you you can't afford to go to Israel. Uh, you can afford to do a lot of other junk uh, that you do. And if you wanted to go bad enough, you'd save up for it, you see, but you won't. I'm going to Jerusalem, the Lord willing. Been there over 50 times. I'll be going there in November again. You say, why? I want to breathe the air that's there. I want to feel the spiritual temperature that's there. Because all mighty and great things take place in Jerusalem. And I, <laughs> I hear people say, uh, well, I've been there one time. Well, you had cornflakes one time, but your belly got empty the next day. Are you here? Going there one time is not what we're talking about. It's going there drinking of prophecy. <coughs> drinking of the Word of God while you're there. Getting a feel of what's going to take place in that city. Even after the thousand year reign of Christ, when He reigns over the total earth for a thousand years, there's going to be a battle there. And it's not because Jesus wants it there, it's because 
the, the devil desires it there. Now, we're not dealing with the Antichrist anymore. This is a thousand years after that. And, and then he says, the camp of the saints about, which is the beloved city, and that's Jerusalem, and, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Altogether different from the book, from the Revelation, uh, from the Armageddon battle that will be a thousand years before that. And the devil that deceived them at that point was cast into the lake of fire. He's going to the same place that all sinners go to. He will be right there where all transgressors, all rebellious people. You know, rebellion, the Bible says, is worse than witchcraft. I, I just kind of hate rebellion, you know. You can see it in people's eyes, a spirit of rebellion. Little Lester's preaching in a, in a big church over in Virginia today, one of my very good friends over there. And the youth pastor just walked off uh, with, the, with almost all of the youth, told them some lies against the pastor that were nothing like being true. And really they've called Lester over to put the thing back together again. And, and uh, he is wailing away, he's already I talked to him this morning. He's already preached three times. He's going to preach two more times today to try to bring the young people, show them the foolishness of coming against their pastor and following some kid that's never had anything in his life, you know? All, all he has been is a subordinate and, a, 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 you know, uh, other countries know so much more about running a church than America does, you know? Uh, that, you, you, you can't imagine the old free rebellious spirit in this country, you know. That old cowboy spirit walks down every street in this nation. I want you to know that I'm a free man and I'll kick everybody out of the way I get in, gets in front of me. And, and uh, it's in the preachers also. But now you take in Brazil, also in Puerto Rico, and different places where I've been. A young man cannot be a pastor until he has served under a pastor for a minimum of one year. He's got to go change the baby's diapers. He's got to sweep the floor. He's got to run down to the store and pick up things for the family. He is a servant of the pastor. You say, well, that's terrible. Well, no, it's not terrible. When he gets married, he's going to have to do that. <laughs> Why not get him ready to do it, you see? And, and uh, how's he going to be a father if, you don't, if he doesn't know how to be one? You see, and, 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 then, and then it goes over to the church. He does everything he's told to do in the church. The pastor tells him what to do. And he, he, do, he goes through that for one whole year, learning what it means to be a pastor, you see. And that knocks a lot of the rebellion out. You know, you, I, I, I don't hear very many churches in Brazil that split. Uh, and maybe that's the reason for it. They're trained before they get the job, you know. But over here, you walk dancing out of Bible school thinking you know everything and you don't know anything. And, and you, you think you're smarter than the pastor who's been working 16, 18, 20 years. And then you walk off with some of the people. You walk off with some of the people. And you think that's real smart. It's not smart. You're going nowhere. They're going nowhere. They walk off with you. And half of them will be back with their heads between their knees and the other half will backslide and go to hell. And you're to blame for it. I have never caused a problem in a church in my life. I've been in a lot of churches that had problems, but I didn't get in there and stir that mess up and say, I tell you, I know the way out. If I do anything, I have a prayer meeting with the pastor and I instruct him as to how he can handle that situation. I do not, I am not a troublemaker. I refuse to be a troublemaker. And you can, oh, I'm right, I'm right. Well, the devil's been right a lot of times, but he's still going to hell, you know. Being right maybe doesn't give you the privilege of tearing up things. Are you here? Amen. Yeah. We preached in Oklahoma this week where one man walked off with 100 of the saints there and just pushed them almost down to the bottom, you know. The, and in a, in a town of only 30,000 people, you let a hundred people leave a church, brother, and everybody in town knows it, you see. The poor pastor has to face those people every day on the streets and everywhere else, you know. Oh, oh, that's the guy that lost his church. Of course, the devil magnifies it, makes it 300 before you get going very far. 
and, and, and but I, I am not a person, and I've had 65 years of ministry, and, and I'm not a person that's ever caused one ripple in any church I've ever been in my life. And, and some people glory in that. Boy, I set that bunch straight. No, you didn't. You just showed yourself to be a jackass. How many love Brother Sumrall? God never called us to be judges. God called us to be servants. I'm a servant. I am your servant today. I am the Lord's servant today. The Lord hasn't called me here to hurt your home. He's called me here to love your home. He hasn't called me to walk in and try to make your home straight because what might be straight to you might be crooked for me. So I'm not, I'm not a bender to go around bending everybody. The Word of God is our guide. And as the Word of God is preached, then you have to make a decision how you want to respond to the Word of God. And all the people said? Amen. Well, that's enough of that. Uh, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where all, this, all the ungodly will be. And where the beast and the false prophet, they are there, the Antichrist is there, and the head of the world religion, he's also in hell. And, and, and they shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. How many believe the Word of God? I don't want to go to that place. Ever and ever is a long time. After the thousand years have expired, Satan will be loosed and released from prison, and he will go out to deceive the nations again. And, and uh, then he will conclude that period of time. It could be one year, two years, three years, I don't know. And they call that battle Gog and Magog, which is not much of a battle because God rains fire and brimstone down upon them and finishes it off in a hurry. Uh, that's on your number four. Fire comes down from heaven and they all went up on the breadth of the earth and passed this, the camp of the saints, it says, about and, and the beloved city and fire came down out of heaven and, and it devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone uh, uh, where the beast and the false prophet were and he was tormented day and night. Satan's armies will be devoured Everything evil is going to be devoured. If you are on the evil side, you're on the destruction side. Whatever it is, it's going to go to pieces. But I won't tell you that song, On the Solid Rock I Stand. That's a place to stand. That rock is Jesus, you know. On the solid rock I stand, and he won't be on the shifting sands of time. But forever, we want to be on the right spot with God. And all the people said, all right. And Satan, the beast, and the false prophet will all be tormented there uh, together. Now, in the book of Isaiah, if you'd like to go backwards a little, chapter 65, um, beginning in verse 17, Behold, a, a new heaven and a new earth, and, and the former shall not be remembered anymore, nor come into mind, but, but ye shall be glad and rejoice forever in that which and, and which I, I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and, and, and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, uh, nor the voice of crying. Now that's the reason I keep going back to Jerusalem. I don't go because I want to see something. There's nothing there I want to see. Uh, I, I go there to feel something. I go there to hear from God because inevitably when I go there, He shows me something in the Word that I hadn't seen before. So it is a place of spiritual revelation. And I want to get into it. How about you? And there should be no more thence an infant of days or an old man. You see, I told you we'd all be the same age as Jesus. You didn't believe it, but there it is in the Word of God. There won't be any children. There won't be any old men there. For the child shall be a hundred years old, but the sinner, being a hundred years old, shall be shall be accursed. And and they built and they built homes to, uh, and inhabit them. I, excuse me. And they built not. Uh, they built not. And and they did not build houses to inhabit them, and they shall 
plant vineyards and eat the fruit thereof. They shall build homes, and uh, they got a, a word in there, they missed it. They, they, they built homes and they inhabited them, and they built vineyards and they have fruit from them. And, and they shall not build and another inhabit. This is a verse of scripture, you ought to mark it and keep it for your own, you know. And, 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 and they, they shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat it. For as the days uh, um, uh, of a tree are the days of my people, and, and mine elect uh, shall long uh, enjoy the work of their hands. Uh, they shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth trouble. Uh, uh, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. Your children will be the same. And, and they shall, and, and it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer them. And while they're yet speaking, I will hear them, saith the Lord. And so the end of the picture is mighty, is mighty good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 